Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the Easter Riding of Yorkshire. It's a very nice, bright, sunny morning here. An early sunny morning. An early sunny morning. You'll have noticed I've got Nikki with me for the first time in this county for a while. Mm. Hello, Nikki. Hello. We've had a little surprise on the way here today. We saw a deer. A deer. An actual deer. A little a, doe. A little doe deer, yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, if there's a deer around, it must be quite expensive because it's a little deer. Haha, <laughs> funny. <laughs> Get on with it. This is Bishop Wilson. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Bishop Wilton, described on the website of its local shop as an extraordinary village and one of Yorkshire's best kept secrets. Nestled beneath Bishop Wilton Wold, that same website goes on to say the village is not only beautiful, but much of its real appeal rests on its sense of community. That's the reason many people move here. After walking around this one, we couldn't disagree with any of that. A secret is certainly right. No matter which way you enter Bishop Wilton, the village as an entity is not highly visible. The most impressive approach is from the east, as the whole village opens up dramatically as you descend the walls. Its centre is bisected by Bishop Wilton Beck, and it's been a conservation area since the 1970s. The name Bishop Wilton is a mixture of two elements. Firstly, the Bishop part is thanks to a huge set of earthworks, whilst the Wilton part can be attributed to a Saxon saint, St Edith. It's got an old water mill, two old chapels, a pub called the Fleece Inn, and a village hall with a sports area. It also contains the greater part of a World War II airfield. Theoretically, this is a place lots of people should know, not just for its history, but also for its main attraction. Since 1897, Bishop Wilton has held an annual event every July. Named the Bishop Wilton Show, almost 2,000 people now attend it every year. Lots here then, let's go and check it all out. Our start point is the junction of South Lane and Park Lane to the south of the village centre. Both of those roads are primarily residential in nature. Our first landmark off Park Lane is Goodhart's Wood. This is a brilliant mix of broadleaf woodland and wood pasture, making it a great place to spot wildlife. It's some 3.6 acres big, nestled on a gentle northwest facing slope. It has some standout trees and interesting pastoral history given on this board. Back to the road now, and these buildings belong to York Osteoarchaeology, and yes, that's exactly what it sounds like. They specialise in the excavation, processing, analysis, reporting, and publication of human remains. I can guarantee you, these guys could tell you some stories. The path at the end of this road brings us to an old water mill, one of the many listed buildings around the Village Green. And speaking of the Village Green, let's take a look at it. Get ready for a gorgeous view. So this is quite the village green, as you can see. It's, uh, it splits the village into two sort of discernible parts. On this side, 
and one this side with a stream in the middle of it. We need to cross that stream now because we're heading for the church. You can see the spire just there. Let's go and investigate that. What with its fabulous tall spire, Bishop Wilton's church certainly cannot be missed. Let's cross the green and the stream to get a closer look. This is dedicated to St Edith of Wilton, who was a member of Wilton Abbey, a Benedictine convent in Wiltshire. Edith was the only known daughter of Edgar, the King of England, in the 10th century. There's a few nice bits in the churchyard here. Take for example this Grade 2 listed Victorian lamp, which greets you as you enter. Next to this we've got the War Memorial. There are names on all four sides of this, but only the 12 on the western side are those who died in World War I. The others are those who served and returned. The church itself is on the Sykes Church's trail. It was restored in 1858 and 59 with internal embellishment designs by John Loughborough Pearson. In the porch we came across a notice board and Nicky did the honours today. Mark off Bishop Wilton everybody, there's still 64 left in the East Riding. I've just realised my camera lens was absolutely filthy, so if, if the shots have looked a little bit blurry um, up to now, you know why. So we're going to have a walk around the churchyard. Normally Nikki would have her camera out at this point, but you've not brought it today, have you Nikki? No. So it's all on mine. We're still going to have a little explore though. Let's I have see to what say we can find. this is one of the most novel ways that I've got into the churchyard because they actually come over style into the church rather than open the gate. I said there was a gate, you just chose not to use it. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a, a separate part of the churchyard here which is defined by a wall. An extension. It's an extension isn't it? So this will be a, a style here look. Yeah. That for style. <laughs> you can enter this churchyard in style. I'm here all week. Oh, do you know what? You should have been on the stage. The last one left about 10 minutes ago. Oh, really? <laughs> I think I missed the boat. Anyway, <laughs> it's the churchyard extension. Obviously a newer part to the much older yeah. churchyard on the other side of the wall. Uh -huh. Beautiful church, isn't it? Very. Some Very nice nice pinnacles next to the spire. Just yeah. noticed those on either side. There's probably four, but I can't see for the sun. <laughs> it looks like as well that they're doing the typical thing, which we're seeing a lot now, is that some of the areas of the churchyard is being left to grow to um, wildlife uh, for wildflowers. Yeah, yeah, it's always a good thing that. Yeah. Encouraging the wildlife. Now we've seen the deer. We've just seen a squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll head around this uh, churchyard and come back out the way we came in and eventually we'll go back onto the road. The next major landmark is a, a massive set of earthworks and it's quite important to Bishop Wilton because without those earthworks this wouldn't be called Bishop Wilton. I'll explain when I get there. The eastern portion of Main Street has some fabulous properties, a lot of which are listed. This is Wilton House, which is crazily not one of them. As the road bends, you find the village primary school, which is Church of England and voluntary controlled. Dead opposite this, we find those earthworks. The earthworks give Bishop Wilton the first half of its name. This was once the site of the Archbishop of York's palace. What once stood here is thought to have been built for Archbishop Neville during the reign of Edward IV, although some believe it was built 200 years earlier for Archbishop Walter de Grey. Either way, it's highly likely that these moated earthworks lie over much older Saxon structures. Given the current palace at Bishopthorpe, this would have been one of the grandest domestic properties in medieval Yorkshire. At the end of the road is another fine mesh. Now closed, this was a former art gallery which had a screen printing workshop. So as well as deers and squirrels in the churchyard, we've also got rabbits as well out here. There's one that's just run behind these cricket nets out of view. That's two we've seen now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and squirrels. <laughs> Amazing. Right, let's go on to the sports field. If Nicky would kindly open the gate. There we go. There it oh, there it is. It ran straight across. I don't know whether you saw it. It was very quick. So we're on to Bishop Wilton's sports fields. And Village Hall. Right? And Village Hall, which is away to our left just here. We think that's the Village Hall. We're not quite sure just yet. There's the cricket square. 
Not a bad place to play cricket, this, eh? No, I might just have two minutes on this bench, I think. Yeah, enjoy the view. See the more, more rabbits. Absolutely. Several sports are catered for in Bishop Wilton. Cricket is one of them, and so too is tennis. Here's the courts where Bishop Wilton Tennis Club play. Now, speaking of tennis, a different kind can be played inside the Village Hall. Earlier this year, Bishop Wilton Table Tennis Club was founded, and they meet here every Wednesday night. The Village Hall is otherwise a fantastic multi-purpose facility, and a central hub for both the local community and broader recreational, educational and corporate use. This next part of the route saw us amble our way down Worsendale Road. Not a bad route to take, actually, given the scenery out here. After passing a handful of houses, you get another look at the church from the rear. This small green space provides a link into the cemetery extension that we saw earlier. Now, farming is an important industry out here. We reckon there must be a fair few sheep farmers out here. After all, there was plenty of evidence. Have you crafty types? And sheep wool on the fence. Show it to the camera then. Oh. Fibre. Yeah. <laughs> You'd make a sweater out of that. After the village shop closed in 2018, it had a big impact on the local community. Two years later though, the voluntarily run Bishop Wilton Community Shop and Cafe was opened, and it's now the linchpin of village life. It occupies a former primitive Methodist chapel, which dates back to 1839. A few steps away is the village pub. Perhaps backing up the sheep farming theory, this is named the Fleece Inn, which can offer the Yorkshire Walls visitor some accommodation in the form of some adjoining rooms. In the dead centre of the village is a bus stop featuring a bishop chess piece and the letters BWS. In the summer, shuttle buses stop here to take people to the Bishop Wilton Show, an annual village event dating back to 1897. That will be the subject of today's special section, so stick around. Moving on, we have a shelter, a second notice board, and to keep all the fans happy, the village's modest sized patch of allotments. Got a cater for everybody. Okay, we're getting our money's worth out of this little stream because we've got to cross it again now over the stream to the other side of the road. You might just be able to see if Nikki, me. if Nikki hops out of the way, there is a phone box hiding over there. And next to that, there is a chapel. So we're going to get across there, walk along the other side of the road and then cross the stream again at the other end. <laughs> we've seen enough of this stream already, haven't we? But it, you know what? It's a lovely little... Yeah, but it ain't the Mississippi, so we'll manage. The stream which splits the village in two is called Bishop Wilton Beck. Once again, check out that crystal clear water that we're so used to seeing on the Yorkshire Wolds. Now we're having a look at the western half of Main Street, starting with the old red phone box, which still has a working telephone. Right next to this is another old chapel. This one dates back to 1860. It's not a shop, this one. Instead, it's been converted into a luxury holiday home. And who wouldn't want to live here, I ask you? I think those that do are very lucky to do so. The rest of the road is lined with traditional cottages of the type we've come to recognise in East Yorkshire. Did you notice the rather odd way that Main Street is laid out here, by the way? It's effectively three roads, all running parallel to one another. Quite the oddity. I guess that's down to the nature, though, of Bishop Wilton Beck. Our last task was to make our way back to the start, completing the circuit by using this footpath to South Lane. Okay, that brings us to Manor Croft, and we are virtually around the route. The car is parked literally just a few steps away from here. Shall we see if the shop's open now, Nikki? Uh, we'll see. Maybe a cup of tea and a bit of cake? Maybe. Might be a bit early for that, but we'll see.
So what about the Bishop Wilton Show? Well, it's an annual event which usually takes place in July. In fact, this year, its 125th edition was scheduled for Saturday the 15th of July. Essentially a village show and craft fair, it attracts nearly 2,000 visitors a year from across the UK. It offers a full day's entertainment for all ages. According to its website, the 2023 show included an aircraft display, a mobile farm full of animals, a dog agility show, historic battle reenactments, and the Bishop Wilton Beast, a brand new off-road race. It all started in 1897 as the Bishop Wilton Flower Show in a tent erected in the schoolyard. The first show had some links to South Africa, although it's unclear from my research what exactly they were. Nonetheless, in the early days it was accompanied by a cricket match, sports, a brass band and an evening dance. By 1907, a competition for mares, foals, cows and pigs had been added, and the earliest known photograph from the show dates from 1923. Bishop Wilton Parish has two other settlements within its boundaries. These are Yulethorpe and Gowthorpe, two tiny hamlets between the village and the old Full Sutton airfield. Both of these hamlets are predominantly farming settlements. They've been joined together administratively since the 1800s. They once formed the civil parish of Yulethorpe with Gowthorpe, which was abolished in 1935 and then absorbed into Bishop Wilton. The larger of the two is Yulethorpe, which has just the one listed building, East Farmhouse, which was listed Grade 2 in 1987. Gowthorpe is more of a blink and you'll miss it kind of place. It has very few houses and a couple of farms, and driving through it makes you think you've left civilization for good. However, this lane, windy as it is, eventually brings you to a crossroads. If you go straight over them, Common Lane takes you onto the Full Sutton airfield. Most of RAF Full Sutton falls within Bishop Wilton, despite Full Sutton itself being a separate parish. The former airbase is now mostly an industrial estate. However, part of it does still see some aviation, as it has training facilities for aspiring pilots. Full Sutton operated as a bomber airfield during World War II. It opened in 1944, making it the last bomber command airfield constructed in the UK. It was the base of No. 77 Squadron, who operated Halifax bombers. They would later move to RAF Broadwell in 1945. The base was laid out in the standard design of a heavy bomber station, having three runways in that now familiar A shape. The longest measured 5,940 feet. After the war, it was used to maintain a number of Thor missiles in readiness as part of the UK deterrent force before finally closing in April 1963. During the late 1950s, part of the airfield's runways and perimeter track were used for four races organised by the British Racing and Sports Car Club. Okay, so the plan was to get out of, out of the car at this point, but uh, Nikki pointed out that I do need the camera on the dash in the, again in a moment, so... Uh, it's easy just to stay in the car and talk about this. We've got a, a very weird building behind us, which you may have caught, may have seen at the end of that last shot. Uh, like a Venetian palace, isn't it? Mm. In the middle of an industrial estate here in East Yorkshire. Very strange. Yeah, but, the, uh, like, the like doesn't have windows. It has doors at every level. Every level. Blah, 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 doors at every level that open onto a Juliet balcony. Weird, weird, mm. weird. But nice though, don't get me wrong. Okay, yeah. now as far as Full Sutton Industrial Estate goes, this was the former RAF base. But there's some more coming on this next week and you won't want to miss out on this because part of the old airbase is now something very different. Stick with me, you'll see what I'm talking about in seven days time. After passing airfield nurseries, the northernmost tip of the old RAF base is where we're headed primarily now, as it contains the biggest landmark in the parish of Full Sutton. There's a village to explore as well though, so come back this time next week to find out what it's like. I'll see you later! Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. 
You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.